Well, hello and uh, welcome to Sonsha, which is a, a mini series of oh, events that are re leading up to Belfast Whiskey Week. Uh, and our first episode um, is going to be with Brendan Carty from Cologne Distillery. Um, and for those that don't know what we're doing, we're just spending half an hour, 45 minutes, having a chat with distillery owners, blenders, master distillers, maybe some um, ambassadors. But really, it's just to have a look at what's going on at those distilleries right now and the lead up to the, the, the Belfast Whiskey Week and to say thank you to those guys who took part uh, last year and those that are going to be taking part this year. So welcome along, Brendan. How are we? Hi, not too bad. Thanks for having me again. Well, big Good. supporter of the club and big supporter of Belfast Whiskey Week. I mean, so. Of course, and that's very kind of you. And listen, yeah, look, this is a, this is a, I love the glass. Yes, yes. <laughs> We've got the glass. Um, listen, we're just going to, I've got three drinks here tonight, so I'm just going to crack on. I'm going to have, and I love, listen, I love these. Just love these. Look at these. Sex. This is, I, I, I have no the left. Class. We were on shorts. Why did we give out? <laughs> well, listen, we're going to, I'm just going to crack on. I've got three drinks here tonight, so beautiful bag, and I'm going to crack on with this, which was the oatmeal. All right. So, massive fan. So this is a 10 year old oatmeal stout um, out of the, the bonded experimental cast series. 51.5% um, 51. <sighs> smells great. So, like the rest of them, they're all sold out. Um, so they can't be gotten anymore. Um, even our own stocks we didn't have any for sales. This is my bottle, which was, um, you can see it's the dregs of the cask after we oh, do wow. flocking so it's, there's a lot of filth in there so <laughs> i like it to go anyway so just be well, drinking just notice in mine look this is my Suit. personal one as well look at that there's yeah. some dirt in there guys it's a bit more stylish that bit than <laughs> but yeah again no filtration and uh, i don't think mine would be quite marketable but uh -huh. i actually got a complaint it's funny i should put it into some of the groups so i got a, a few complaints of late about stuff being in the bottles and you just have to still explain the reason why. But uh, that's mad, isn't it? Because you know we're, we're all about. I suppose we're all about getting these fresh out the barrels, cast mm. strengths. Loving the fact that they're loving the fact that they're blended. You know we have got a series, and thank you very much, um, Brendan, for bringing us a series of seven different uh, blends. You know, yet very much consistent in terms of the the, the actual constitution of those blends. But each one of them finished differently. Each one of them given a, a new lease of life in different barrels. Um, this is one of my favourites. That's why I brought it tonight. I just love that. Oh, it was a good the start. Note, right, the, the nose yeah. is just unreal. And it, I, I would say the next one's a Hungarian oak. So, uh, but this mm. one's uh, this one's one of my favourites. It's funny. Everyone has, has their own favourites. Um, the the Hungarian oak. I thought it was my favourite. Uh, most people seem to love the rum the best. Um, but then. I think third of all, most people are loving this one, but obviously it's your it's their first. So the, the okay. stout cast came from More Mountains Brewery. We were in More Mountains Brewery in One Point, and they had an oatmeal imperial stout, so it's full on stout. And that connection with oats and cologne and our distillate going forward and trying to bring back the oat in mash bills and putting oat more to the fore as it was in the past uh, in Irish distillation. So um, yeah, we just thought we'd tie it in well and. You know, it just worked. It just gave it loads more body. You know, and <clears throat> dried Very it out. Much so. It's creamy, Brendan. It's got a creaminess to this one. Really creamy. And little hints of coffeeness. That kind of coffee cake sponge. Lovely. Coming through. Absolutely great. And listen, I'm going to read some of these comments. I know that some people, when they do these conversations, they don't bore reading. I'm loving it. We've got loads of people in here for the crack tonight. Cassandra, yes. Get on the drink. Forget work. Just get on it. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about, Cassandra. You know what I'm talking about. And uh, Gareth Spencer, there's no way you're getting, there's no way you're getting my uh, my, my stout bottle here. No chance. Gareth um, is enough. But listen, you know, th there's a there's a, a, a massive demand uh, for your whiskey, and there has been. And what what was really nice was the kind of final touches that Hungarian oak, which will I'll crack into in a wee minute. Um, you know, the, the last one in the series really took off. People got really inspired by it. Like, what? The end of what? End of a series? And people, some people who hadn't followed the journey, some people hadn't seen it from the start, 
you know, the, the, the rum cask, uh, which kind of started the whole project, you couldn't really shift off the shelves quick, you know, quickly, which was interesting. It kind of lingered on, and there's been a couple that had sat on the shelves, and all of a sudden it just started to pick up pace. People were like, oh, right, I need to try this one. Maybe some people that maybe picked up the tequila cask, maybe some people who picked up the oatmeal went, I need to try the rum, I need to try the, tru you know, Trucalina. I want to go and try the Pinot Noir. I need to go and try all these ones. Getting, mm. you know, it, it kind of drummed up such a frenzy. People really bought into it. And it's difficult, Brendan, I'm about to crack open two full sets. So two full sets, my own personal sets, are about to get poured for this <coughs> mini uh, festive week that we have here at Paddy's Week. And I'm gutted in some respects because I, I, I love every one of them. And I noticed when I came to those two sets, I never had a third set. And I'm just looking at myself going, what have I done? But we've got so many people now going to be tasting that, you know, uh, mm. come you know, come March. And it's been, you know, it's a pleasure getting that out there. An absolute pleasure getting the, 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 the whiskey out so people can drink it, you know. Opening bottles of cologne. It's what it's all about. Um, fair yes, enough. There's always going to be a few laying about there. Um, but I think opening bottles is something we're going to really try to encourage going forward. So it's a credit to yourself. You've opened bottles for Belfast Whiskey Week, Belfast Whiskey Club, Belfast Whiskey Week in the past. Um, that's what it's all about. Um, right now, I think the only opportunity people have of getting to taste that Cologne Experimental Series is through yourself. So hats off yeah. to you, Paul. Yeah. And, uh, I think that I think it sold out actually very quickly, didn't it? It, oh my God, it, was, it sold it, it sold out, and it was really embarrassing because it sold out within the matter of a minute, and it and I wasn't expecting that, and I only put out a, a, the first because as I say, we've got two sets. I put out the first set, and it sold out in a minute, and I went, oh my God, I'm going to have to put out the second set quickly as well. Yeah. So again, I put it out, and and again, it sold very quickly. But I think what's interesting <clears> is you know we, we built up. The distillery itself is, has, has garnered its brand, hasn't it? It's garnered a brand. The, the Cologne brand, I think, is quite strong. It, it has its own movement now. So the guys who are now involved in hundreds of them, hundreds of people in the Cologne cult, um, you know, followers, as it were, you know, of, of the distillery, the enthusiasts of the distillery, that cult movement, people are like going frenzy for everything about it. You know, really want to know what's going on in the next bottle, the night, you know, the next type of whiskey, they want to taste the new makes, they want to see what's coming from Cologne. Uh, and yeah, do you know what? Big crusade that we're going to have on just now is Cologne, and I think it's going to be Cologne openers. I think we're, we're saying if you're part of the cult, <laughs> if you're part of the cult and you want to be part right. of the, the cult, open your bottles. Let's see what you've got. Jump have you around. noticed that? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you've noticed that. I've been trying to say that for a while yeah, now. That's what, I think that's what it's about now, you know. It's a, We've we've got a lot of people who are really interested, and they're interested for the right reasons because they've tasted it and it tastes superb. Um, they're not in it for the wrong reasons. They're not flippers, you know. They're not people who are just here for the for the, for the fun or for, for a, a name badge or whatever it is. They're here because they're enjoying the spirit. So you know, and and as I say, the demand, you know, the demand for this uh, for, for for this little box even during during Easter, you know, during uh, Paddy's Day, it could have double trebled quadrupled the amount of sales it could have had it's just there isn't enough liquid um so the onus is on you brendan unfortunately to really think about what you're going to do in the summer what's cologne going to be doing and what you know what can we do to you know get the message out there lots more liquid around the world you know um what you managed to achieve last year um and for the amount of attention that you, you got you know from the, the from from belfast whiskey it was huge you know, we had cologne boxes going round the world. We definitely had some land in Australia. You know, so we yeah. got boxes land in Australia. You know that halfway, you know, half of Europe got it. So we got bottles and uh, bottles of cologne into Sweden and in Germany. Um, we definitely had it all over the states and into Canada. Mm. You know, people were like, "We want to taste cologne." And I know that you yeah. do your own stuff now. You go into America, which would be great for that market. But here, the festival helped you. It's only small amounts. It did, yeah. It's only small amounts, but the festival enabled us to get the stuff out there. We always are generous. We're always creating competitions and even sending out samples to random people um, that we just, you know, we just want them to taste it. And uh, we're putting names in hats and sending it to them, we're just asking them for their addresses. So we are as generous as possible. Uh, we don't have enough money for advertising. So Liquid on Lips is our strategy, and we just send it out there. And, um, you know, we're, we're answered back with kindness. The cult that you're talking about is hilarious. I just wanted to chat on it. 
it wasn't set up by Cologne Distillery. It was set up by the likes of yourself, Ian Garrett in Dublin, Matt Morrison, and Mick. The, um, there's a few other guys. You know, all, you all set it up together, and it's just it's an example. There was also during the process of opening it up after a number of months, you started the Cologne Cull, which is hilarious. But you rooted yeah. out all the bodies who weren't going to open their bottles, and, and that uh, exists. That cull. So the cull exists within the cult. If people are not participating you know it's not like oh. and here we're going to have to say this it's just not a fan club it's just not one of these come and get a badge think you're smart think you're cool think you're part of the pack no 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 you're part of the cult you want to be part of the cult you have to interact you have to be part of it don't interact don't open bottles don't drink don't share stories you know don't share random pictures of you with your bottles and your shower i don't know what you're doing mick mcguire but listen mm. come and get involved and if you're getting involved that level of appreciation that interaction is going to be you know you're going to see that continue you're going to see people you know maybe you know sending out small samples so you can taste them you know, getting involved with the distillery a lot more that's what we mm. intend to do so yeah the cull is real people the cull is real we all just like lambs to the slaughter gone i mean all of a sudden gone you know but at the same time you're allowing new people in aren't you all the time all yeah. the time, you know, we, Jesus, right. we, we, you know, we've grown uh, hundreds of people now. There's just hundreds of people involved, and it's and it's lovely to see. And again, it's people who are not just local to to the distillery. It's not just people from Belfast either. You know, it's a lot of people from different countries who are getting involved, who are coming mm, and want yeah. to to know what's happening. And listen, Brendan, let, let's talk about this in real terms of you know cash. You're not a Glen Farkless. You're not a McAllen. You're not. Uh, an IDL brand, you know, Redbreast or Jimison. You're not any of that. The money behind those brands is huge. The advertising budget is huge. Mm -hmm. To pay an influencer, one influencer, you know, ten thousand pounds for ten seconds of advertising for some of these brands yeah. is unreal. What we have going on here is a lot of enthusiastic people who genuinely just want to drink your, you know, whiskey, talk about your whiskey, share the whiskey. I've not seen an advertisement for Cologne. What I have heard, though, is lots of people talking about Cologne. You know, and that's, yeah, that's, that, true. that's yeah. and that's important that there's a lot of people chatting about it, which which is really think, nice. You know, it's, it's touching. The way we used to set it up was myself, Shane McCarthy, Liam Brogan, smashing our heads together, saying we are whiskey drinkers and we're going to make whiskey for whiskey drinkers. So. We don't have to do market research to tap into the market. We just have to make whiskey for ourselves, and that's brilliant. That's that's there's no secret to it. So yeah. what do we want to drink? Let's make it with what tools are available. People can identify with that. Um <laughs> not driving around fancy cars. Like once I get my banger back on the road, you know, I'll be able to <laughs> Do Is you know what I mean? I think there's just there's just a connection people people can identify with, with Is with the broader is the still broken, is it? <laughs> the Bora was a few years back. It's the Passat now, yeah. It's, um, oh, Passat, sorry. It, it's going up. It's going up on Thursday to see if it's worth fixing or not. So, uh, absolutely. Right. Listen, I'm going to crack. I'm going to crack on my second drink just because it's here, and I, I think we should be drinking. You know, while we're chatting, um, and why not? So I'm on to the Hungarian. Uh, so the last in the series, uh, the Hungarian oak. Um, I think this was my favourite. Do you know what? I think it's I think it's been a lot of people's favourite. Very, 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 very scarce on the on 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 the shelves when it, even when it came out because everyone was just hyped. Shit, bonkers. Got it. Everybody, everybody, most, a lot of people who are in the whiskey world, um, producers, uh, and even people who've been drinking for a long time, and people who sell and are interactive. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you don't know him, but the guy there's a, a nut job called Zotan. Sorry, and Zotan is from Hungary. He spent a long time in Ireland. He lived in Wicklow for a while, building houses. Um, Zotan sourced this cask for us. It's a beautiful cask, absolutely beautiful. And uh, it's different from you know, the, 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 the limousine uh, wood that you would get from France, for instance, yeah. that uh, Cork and Super. It's different from that. It's this Hungarian oak, which Flynn O'Connor was saying is actually more in, in tune with what Irish oak is. And uh, it's it's an absolute explosion of clove rather than a lot less of that white pepper you get out of the French oak, for instance. Super amount of spice, isn't it? Yeah. Super amount of spice on those. You know, really, really makes you just want to delve into it very quickly. It's a very unusual nose, unless you've mm. had Hungarian oak finishes with, 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 with other whiskey. Um, 
But this kind of this kind of sets itself apart, even from and look, I don't mind name dropping, but Meth and Madness uh, Hungarian Oak uh, do not compare. You cannot compare. <laughs> this is this is beastly. That this is a we went to town on this finish. You we did, thought you? you know it, it was finished, and we thought you know what, fuck it, we're going to leave it. We're just going to leave it um, till it's borderline overdone. Maybe it is overdone for some people, but for me, that's what I want. I want people. It's the whole point of the experimental series. You want to see what wood does. Yes. Like the Virgin Acacia had done what it done, but then that was European wood, and then this is Hungarian oak, and the two are just so different. Um, no. Virgin I wood. Lots of people just chatting in here, just talking about it. it reminds me a little bit of the Glen, uh, a little bit of the Glendaluck Mizanura. Um, mm. Hungary Oak was a real surprise. Didn't think it would be better, in his opinion, than the dark rum, Richard. Yep, and it ended up mm. for some being better. Uh, we've got some cheeky people here saying, uh, "Look, David Parker saying, look, I'll influence for you for payments and liquid. Love it. Good man, David. Love it. <laughs> but you know what, David." You are influencing already, even by talking about it. So that's dead on, and you, you know, no doubt you have some there to drink. Um, <laughs> nothing. We've got oh, what's the uh, need? Some Gloria. The Gloria. Uh, glo it's a bad word, isn't it? The Gloria is a bad word. Whoever said Gloria there? Gloria. Gloria is a Gloria is a bad word. There was the cask aged coffee liqueur that was prematurely a couple of cases were released from the warehouse and they disappeared fast. So we need to get that out. We've got this lovely coffee liqueur sitting in casks, and we need to get it out. Um, it's just logistical error with um, labelling and things like that. We need to, yes, need to get that out. Sorry about that. <laughs> of course, well, but here, you know, for those that aren't, you know, au fait with what's going on already. So, Brandon, um, down at Cologne, let's just run through a couple of things. Historically, let's run through a couple of things. You know, first of all, we've got the pot chain, and we've got the gin. We've got the bonded experimental, yeah? So we've got these things are there, you know? We've got those things. We've then got little spritzes. How, how do we how do we talk about them? Um, cans of fun? Yeah, spritzers, yeah. Th so those, those are fun, yeah. The, um, basically, they're 5%, uh, so you can't even taste alcohol out of them. But we've seen that they were coming onto the market, you know, and we, we were thinking, we can do this. We can yeah, do you could. Anybody else. You could. So we, we just did, and um, it proved it was a bit of a trick for us to try and get them done, and we got them done, and we got them out there and before it became popular. I still don't think they're popular here in this country, but they're no, out but there. They are good. They are good. They're good fun. And they're then we've got the rum. We've got yeah. the we've got the actual rum. Do you oh, mean? So yeah, it's fascinating stuff. Yeah, it do you know what? Probably yeah. one of the best rums. I I'm a rum drinker. I mean, uh, people who know me know that I like to do rum tastings and have a bit of crack with the rum. Love it. But actually, such a good rum. And, it's it's banging. It's banging. But for it to be made here in this country, it's just lethal. In my head, I'm like, rum from from, yeah. from, from County Down. Oh, There's not enough molasses. Rum. There's not enough molasses in rum, in my opinion, nowadays. There's a lot more sugar, a lot less molasses. And, no. and, and most rum now has been put through a column still, so it's coming out. You know when it's blended with a bit of pot still yeah, rum? Yeah, yeah. You could full on pot still rum. It's just full of tropical notes and heavy molasses notes. And we you know it's two, three week fermentation periods with us. And it comes out manky and fruity, bananas, pineapples. That those flavours are coming out of it. And you put that through a still with a thumper keg attached to it. We do. We're starting to get geeky here talking about distillation. <laughs> no, this is good. It's, and then this we put it through we, we knew we wanted to release it quick, so we cheated. We put it into small casks, you know, solar casks, and rushed it through the solar system um, in small casks at high strength, and it was aged very quickly, and then finished in PX sherry casks. So. Yeah. Most, yes. most of the rum, let's be honest, most of the rum that we see on our shelves, in our bars, you know, is, is just sugar, cane sugar, mm -hmm. lots of sugar, and, mm. and a lot. Um, a little bit of colour in here there. But it's like, but but what I've noticed is those those bottles, those products that are on the shelves, that's what people have become accustomed to. They're not used to good tasting full bodied rums. Do you know what I mean? And that's that's what you have there. And, and I need mm. to see more of that. That needs to keep coming. Well, there and, is, it's, there's a release of it coming this year that's um, aged in a bonkers cask that people really wouldn't expect rum to be in. And it's 
it's unbelievably it works. I mean, like, how has nobody done this before? How has nobody in these islands of England and Scotland and Ireland ever done this before? And it baffles me because all the tools are at our disposal and we haven't done it yet, and it works perfectly. It's the perfect pairing. So, so yeah, get a cask of it out. The last time there was only bottles. This time there's only going to be about two hundred fifty, three hundred, unfortunately. See mm. that's. Uh, but we we'll have to see yes, we'll some for Belfast Whiskey Week in the summer. So we'll do that. <laughs> yes. tell, t- tell me this: um, what batch are we on in terms of the pot chain? Where uh, where are we? The normal pot uh, chain, the pot chain that comes out with that beautiful copper, you know, copper. Yeah. Label. What batch are you on? We done bigger, big batches of it. So likely on three, maybe four, because we're going to ship one batch to the states, um, all being well. Great news. So, yeah, the the, the Pachin is banging. Pachin is oh, talking about Pachin, Paul. Uh, well, we've obviously got our core Pachin. Yeah, you've got a sample of that, and um, so this doesn't exist yet. So this this, this Pachin, we we only so right. Let's talk about this. This isn't. This is a sneak review. So this we're going to put this out there. There's the label. I can't show you the label of it, but I, I have actually, the label, which is brilliant. Absolutely you don't have the label. label. So they're, they're, we're, we're selling it, patching out in a set of five, a set of five bottles. And unfortunately, because there's five bottles of each, we're only able to make 180 sets of it. And we sell them out in a set. Every single bottle represents a different part of the island. And um, we're tapping in with the brewing industry here as well. So we only, you're only allowed to age patching in a cask for, for 10 weeks. And, uh, Unfortunately, the gab shades who wrote the, the technical file, it made sure that you included uh, ridiculous terms, ludicrous terms, more ludicrous than those stupid terms in the, in the whiskey technical file, such as you're not allowed to use the word cask. So that protectionist Unreal. mentality has come in there again. Uh, you're, you're allowed to say wood rested. So this has been wood rested for 10 weeks, each one of them, in a specific cask that represents a different part of the island. And uh, pairing with amazing breweries around the country. Uh, this... This you've thing gone to me, the, you've gone for the four. You've got for the four, Mary, the four provinces, but no nope. mythical province. Well, <laughs> I've been to a count in Yilliga, the Cougar, uh, Cougar in Ireland. So there's actually five provinces in Ireland, and uh, originally, and they used to be known as Cougar, which is the Irish for five, and um, so that's the idea. So it's, it's something that's happened in there. The, the word for province in Irish is is the same word for fifth. So there used to be fifths instead of provinces. So nowadays there's four provinces, but they're still known as four fifths. <laughs> which is bonkers. Well, so there used to be a fifth one. So we're tapping into that, that part of the island as well, which is interesting. So it's just a nice way of tapping into to the lore of patching and the lore of place. You know, that that connection I think is very important. So the one I have just now, the one I am nosing right now, which is non-labeled. <laughs> I mean, it's literally just a wee jerry can. I'm going to go and put this in my in my wee uh, one two my, my one two my one two five or my or I'm going to put it in my glue cart. Right? Your stroke oil, yeah. That's my stroke oil, guys. That's it. All right, mate. Come on, this. Oh dear. But here it smells. It smells unbelievable. That's and that's great. It, 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 do you know what? Needing people need potching in their life, and, and I really do mean that. Like I remember when potching. Like you would get potchy and you go down your wee local bar and mm-hmm. some wee man, it was always a wee man, not to be sexist, but he was always an old wee fella, probably in his 70s, and he's got a brown coat on, you know, just sitting there with his wee hat on, didn't say a word all night, didn't go to the bar once, never bought a drink in his life. I'd sit there, bottle out, into the into the glass, sitting away, and you'd be like, here, give us a wee drink of that, and he'd just pour you a drink, no label on it, no nothing, the boys, you know, made it himself, brought it down the hill. And here, that was potching, mm. and then potching tried to go into a bottle, and it was just white liquid at crazy strength and not great tasting. This, my shame. friend, this, my friend, potching's coming a long way, but this is this, this is, is singing, this, come on, big this is singing centuries of heritage, this is singing pot still mash bills, this is singing. This mash bill isn't the same as our own mash bill. In fact, I think we might have pushed the oat a little bit too much in this, but it's still bang and it's still fantastic. There's extra oat in there. Obviously, when you get these bottles, all the information will be in the label, uh, the mash bills and things like that. But this is about, for us, this is about putting potching on a pedestal. Literally, we're going to be yeah. doing that. Yeah. Potching deserves a pedestal. So it, it does. 
It does indeed. And we've got You're a guy. Dave, we've got Dave down in the 1661, bar 1661. Yeah. Dave has been working very hard for years, pushing potching. And do you know what? People, when they get the chance, and if they get the chance to buy the plinth, beautiful presentation plinth, these beautiful little bottles. Yeah. 250 mils, yeah? 250 mil? I can't believe you're giving it all away here. <laughs> labelled up. Labelled up. I don't know what those labels look like. Labelled up. But here. But if yeah. they're able to purchase that, they're going to they're gonna be, I tell you what, they're in for a treat. It's going Big to be hard to get people to open them. That's the trick. I don't care. No, they must open them. People must. You must, must. Because... And if they don't, they get punished and we're going to track them down. This yeah, time. We're punished the, thing, the thing about this Cougar range is, right, this was meant to be a distillery exclusive. So you came to the distillery and you bought it and took it away with you. So that's what that's what the idea was. But we were holding it off and holding it off, and then mm. the COVID is never ending at the moment. So we have to sell it. Yeah. Um. So when we sell it, how do we do that? So um. We're not. Yeah. Gonna... We're doing. We're we're working up a mini online shop that's going to be working in tandem. So it still is the distillery exclusive. Um. At the it, same time, smart. Our, our beloved bit of business partners, you know, will still be getting. You know, like Irish malts. Anzac Wholesale Celtic Whiskey Shop will still be getting you know a small allocation each if they if they so wish. But uh, this this is a distillery exclusive, so it's going to be sold through ourselves. And that's very important because I think you're realizing look, people are being smart about this now. This coronavirus, people are starting to click on. I had a conversation earlier on today, a very very smart conversation today. I went to a tasting um, this time last year, just about a week past. <laughs> And uh, I didn't shake anyone's hand at the tasting. And people were looking at me going, you're a weirdo. I had my gloves with me, I had my mask and stuff. People were going, you're a weirdo. And I was like, no, listen, you don't know how serious this is going to be. Like, oh, you're, talking, you're talking shite, wee lad. But here today, oh, the conversation, the conversation was very interesting. They, they, you know, that same, you know, one of the same people was like, listen, spot on. And if we're going to be smart about it, we need to be thinking longer term here. And I think that, you know, uh, your business needs to survive, Brendan. The business needs to survive. Expecting people to come to the distillery anytime soon is not going to happen. No. Even looking at the summertime is tough here in Northern Ireland. It looks yeah. tough. It looks tough in the whole of Ireland, to be frank. So I think that people need to have a, a you know a bit of realization. Also, that's good that you've done that as a business. But it's the pubs, the pubs are closed. Oh my God! <laughs> Listen, it's desperate. It's absolutely yeah. desperate. But getting the getting the liquid out there and keeping your business going, that's good for us as well, because we want that and we want to be able to support you. You know, everyone I'm you know, no doubt I'm talking to in the next, you know, couple of weeks is going to be saying the same. The amount of people that I've, you know, talked to and they're like, We've had to change our business model. We do, we cannot specifically rely on a bar trade at the moment. That's just not happening. Off sales, yeah, to a point. Do you know what I mean? But we're talking about you know getting the liquid out to people, making sure people are opening it, sharing it, talking about it, because that's the only way we're going to keep it rolling and we're going to keep it moving. You know, um, so people are asking where do they get it? They're going to get. There's going to be a couple of off sales that are going to get it. The rest of it's going to be online through your own uh, shop, and that's you know that's pretty cool. And that's going to be you know that, that's going to be your partners that are going to be helping you support and doing that. Um, yeah. You know, really impressed. We're just waiting. I believe we're just waiting on Johnny. Well, just finally, exactly. a couple of things. Where, where are you going to get it? The majority of it's going to the Long Cult. Um, first of all, <laughs> they're getting well, they're getting like, a, a cool. large proportion of it. All those, all those guys in the cult, you know, totally. Yeah, and then the rest of the people cool. can, but they aren't allowed then to try and get the stuff in public. You know, so. Yeah. Tell me this. I know that you're not going to give much away about what's in this, but here. There's something that is just it is outstanding. Like, it's not a whiskey, but it could be a whiskey. Yeah, it's definitely not, not a whiskey, but, it but it's on the way. And that peak in there as well, and that oiliness that comes from the oats, and then that little bit of rye in there as well, those mixed mash bills, it's just a celebration. In fairness, I don't think it's just as good as our whiskey mash bill, but it's still brilliant. It's it's just what we've noticed here is whenever we've been because we've really increased the old content in this one, mm. it's just amazing. Um, it was a great experiment, decreased the yield. But it lets you know what oats, if anybody wants to know what oats do in whiskey or what oats do in mash bills, this is what you want to do. It used to be for me, it used to be all about texture, it used to be all about oil and creaminess, and it still is about that. Yeah, but now there's this herbal note that comes with it as well, you know, like a, a mild herb, not like. 
not like keel or anything like that you know not like no. head, just something much more mellow but um, funny yeah, enough more... I, I i was worried i mean sometimes when you get that you know as i say the potching off your wee man in the, in the bar when he's giving you that it, you just neck it you don't be sipping on it you don't be tasting it oh. for ages you neck it because you you know it's rocket fuel and you know you're down in it and you're going take me to the bar take me to yeah. the bar you know but this i mean we can sit here and we can sip this all night this is you really can you really can sipping. this is for the this is for sipping you know and you can sit and admire the imagery on the on the, on the um on the label and then you can turn around you can read about the mash bill you can read about the part of the island that it came from Lovely. and uh, you can read about the liquid um it's got a very high percentage it's just to me they're all beautifully wax dipped small bottles lovely labels um and now i'm not gonna lie that this type of label will never do again because it, it would not stick on we wasted so many labels they were a nightmare to stick on um, they, they kept wanting to crease there wasn't any room for error because of the size of the label on the bottle um wax dipping them writing on every label writing down you know Unreal. Uh, the number that's dedication. of dedication that's dedication that wax dipping, is. writing on the label and we saved we did save we saved a certain amount of liters of every single cast for belfast whiskey week in the summertime so uh that's good to know that's, that's the only so outside of that there's none left I was going to. I was going to say. We're thinking about Belfast Whiskey Week now. We're thinking about it now. What are we going to do, Belfast Whiskey Week? Last week, last year, we threw the kitchen sink out. Nothing there. So well, I, just, we I, I want to recap on. I want to recap on the two festivals you've been involved in. So you were involved in 2019 Belfast Whiskey Week. That was your first festival. It was your first, mm. you know, involvement. Um, right. And it, and it was really interesting. I remember the the tasting upstairs, Duke of York, and mm. it, it was all about your. It, really, it was all about your your new make spirit. It was about it the was. new make spirit. It was about the gin, and it was about the pot chain, the original pot chain, Yeah, it was all about this, this, and then yeah, yeah and you just got you just got the taste of repeated pot stuff. We told you about Petey our reactions to the corruption of the GA mm -hmm. uh, at the minute, and, and all of that. And people, people were all ears, you know, basically carrying on that. A lot of knowledge I gathered myself. A lot of knowledge I gathered, gathered from Fernando O'Connor. Without doubt, and when I attended his tastings uh, of a Tuesday night in Dublin, and uh, that was before Zoom, this, we were getting the buses up and down, yeah. coming up oh, here, missing my stop, end up in Belfast, <laughs> <things like that. laughs> coming back from your tasting, missing my stop, end up in Dundalk. That's <laughs> you know? the way to do it. That's the way to do it. Dedication. 2020, 2020, you guys did go all out, but it's not just that. But you had a hell of a lot of people involved in your tastings, so much so that you sold out. Twice, you know, so you saw it two tastings. You know, we were expecting Cologne to have one tasting, it went big, and we ended up doing a second tasting, and it was just great. You know what I mean? So, um, I, I, I'm excited what you can do this year. I'm excited for what's available and what's coming. I mean, you have lots of, I suppose, your whiskey is progressing. That that's important to me, it's important that the whiskey is progressing. Yeah, the, the thing is, Paul, uh, we sold out three times last year, you've done a third tasting. Oh, sorry, I did. I did. <laughs> The, direct, the director's cut. I'm just going to put it out there. The director's <laughs> cut. Yes, you did. The third. Sorry, we Hold on. Um, we, <laughs> listen, I, I, what, what I would say is we had, we had, we were very lucky because you guys, you know, help facilitate, specifically help facilitate the, um, the Belfast Whiskey Week, you know, festival bottle. And that was great, and we managed to get that into, oh, yeah. we managed to get that into some of those tastings. Um, Am I right in saying, hundred percent, that there's going to be a Cologne Festival bottle this year? Yeah, there there'll have to be something. What do we do? Uh, so there has to be, and I think that although yeah. uh, you know it's all about supporting the distillery at this point. Do you know what I mean? So listen, we're looking forward to that. Looking forward to something special coming from. Dude, there's going to be something special, and yeah. it has to be top notch. It has to tell a good story. It has to exactly. Proper yeah. excited, but proper excited mm -hmm. by that. Um, we've got Dave Cummins. Good to see you too. Yes, hello. Um, <laughs> absolutely brilliant. Sinead, yes, loving the chat as well. Listen, the caption's great because we can't see the when we're doing this conversation. I can't, I can't see, see you on your phone. Who is it, Sinead Watson? Is it? Yeah, apparently, I think when you're on watching it via Facebook or something, they actually get give you subtitles. Mm. 
So I, I and it can look like German when they read your accent. I was going to like, say subtitles from Scots is really, really bad. Like <laughs> naked potching. I'm all for naked potching. That's one hundred percent vanilla. Naked potching. Exactly. Yeah, vanilla. Good luck. <laughs> good luck. No, I mean, mm. um, <laughs> yes, excellent. So, so listen, just a, another couple of wee things about the, the distillery itself. Um, tell me a little bit about production. Where are we in terms of the actual liquid? What? How old are we now? How old is this liquid? The, uh, it's over two years old. So it's uh, we get our two years old. We'll say you know. So Super. now a year ago, and um, you know we've got some lovely stuff there. The, we we realised after a while we weren't laying down enough of our core product because we sold a couple of casks. You know, there's a lot of people looking for casks, but unfortunately there's a big backlog. Um, and uh, we realised that our core product. And we were experimenting a huge amount as well. So we could loads of experiments going on. And then that look of our core mash bowl, which we think is just groundbreaking. And it just so happens to be very close to what all of the Irish distilleries were doing. So we stumbled across this by mistake through experimentation. And then when you talk to the, you know, geniuses like Fanon working on all of these old mash bowls, for instance, it turns out that they're very similar to what was done. And there, that was the status quo at the time. And I'm wondering why. But I'll tell you this one thing. It's a lot cheaper to make whiskey the way Potsdam is made today than it was to make it the old way. Yeah. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Maybe that's the reason why it changed a lot as well. I'm not trying to take away from any of these amazing Potsdams we have today because they're, they are amazing. But why saddle? Why saddle? There's not, a bad, there's, not a bad potching, there's not a bad potching coming out of IDL. Let's just, let's just be frank. It's not a mm. bad potching. Uh, sorry, potching Potsdam. Potsdam, 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 Potsdam yeah. Maybe that, but even this potching. Normal, but yeah, I hear you. It's oh, one, 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 one's the other one's daddy, so not too far wrong. But uh, then that's true, and that's what Irish. It, it's a part of who we are, you know. It's for those mixed match balls. So let's just experiment a little bit more and open it up. And you know, there's a lot of work going on in the background. There's other distilleries back Blackwater as well at the forefront of this uh, green research. Bowan now with Fanon's stuff, and that tide's changing. Um, Fantastic, can't wait. Uh, no, uh, what, what's going on at, at Cologne? Sorry, I it, but it's, we're doing one cask a week. Uh, we tried to increase that to a cask and a half, but it's just too expensive to be going through that much grain. Maybe next year when we start selling our own product, we'll go up to a cask and a half a week again. But yeah, so at the minute, we're getting a cask a week while we're in production. And uh, lovely stuff. If people, people are giving you names for this uh, bottle for the. Uh... For, for the whiskey festival, they're giving you names for it. Go tears ahead. Of, tears of and the whiskey dreamer. Yeah, there you go. You know, te- whiskey dreamer. Yeah, listen, Dave, that's a good listen. I, I think I think there's a lot to be said by people giving ideas to Brandon. Brandon is one of the only people I know that truly takes upon people's opinions and makes oh, it, you know, but you do. I mean, you, you listen to a lot yeah. of people, you know, there's a lot of people around you. You've got Liam and Shane, you've got you know, <sighs> Jesus Pierce. Christ. Oh, sorry, Pierce. Oh my Pierce, God. Pierce. Pierce. He has got mad ideas. He has got mad ideas, doesn't he? Love his ideas. In fact, I'm looking forward to some of his ideas. No, I mean, coming to fruition. Mm-hmm. He got the distillery manager of the year. Nice. And, uh, oh my God, I was about to say, oh. is he not like famous now? You can't even afford him. He's got an award. That's it. Gone. He, did. he found out he was giving Head the awards and just did a quiet word. <laughs> He's gonna be he's gonna be headhunted for uh he's gonna be headhunted for uh what'd you call that that big massive distillery up the road, uh Hinch. <laughs> Probably will. Probably will. That'll be him gone. <laughs> Give me an iron will steal him off me. I'm Here, not tears of an association. Ah oh, Jesus. Listen, Brendan's toeing the line tonight, he's doing really well. Um he's got him you know, he's he's keeping he's keeping himself above board. Listen in terms of the festival, I mean, obviously, look, we're, we're going to be trying as much as we can to try and have physical events. Now, we're going to be, we're going to be pushed backwards and forwards by different, uh, different policies that are coming out here in terms of what can be done restriction-wise. But look, you know, what, what we have is a promise, um, you know, to, to get the, the, the events out as much as possible. So we're going to be doing all of the, all of the cool and tastings will be uh, provided uh, or broadcast uh, live. So during the festival, all of uh, Cologne's stations, doesn't matter if it's physical or, or not physical, will be broadcast live. So everyone can take part. 
Uh, we're going to make sure that that's the case. Keep it, you know, keep it uh, as available as possible. But yeah, it would be nice, and I was praying that we'd have the ability in the summertime to get people down to the distillery. You know, part of the festival was this idea of taking people from Belfast, from the festival itself, driving down to Cologne and having a bit of a, a, a tour of the distillery. Um, and I think that if we can, we'd love to see that happen. But we should guarantee this, shouldn't we, Brendan, that we are, you know, over the next couple of years, you're going to see that happen. People are going to return to the distillery. People are going to be down there. They're going to have to get in to that very small, the smallest distillery. Is it still the smallest distillery on the island? I think so. A lot of people are claiming yeah. there. Maybe they are, but who cares? It's good well, to see a few more. It will be great to get people in there. And do you know what? Social distancing, it's probably not the easiest right now. You know, you're not going to get like, you know, hundred people two meters apart. It ain't happening. You know, we but, get um, and the good thing is we were getting Kaylees in there. And people are exactly. Crack is ninety, and you know what? Sometimes we will, and we are going to do a question and answer session if there's some time. We want to invite people up as VIPs if they come. We'd be delighted to have them. Wow! And uh, we'll launch a competition as well and get people up. We'll do what we normally do. That we have a, a, a piper who lives in the road. He's a phenomenal Ellen piper, Danny McGreevy. Let him play his tunes and get old. Do you know what we're looking for, Brendan? We're looking for the poster boy, poster boy, and the poster girl of Cologne. Do you know, like all these big brands, they always have these like one face that you kind of who have, who have we got? David Beckham for Haig. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Re Ryan Reynolds out there doing something with these, you know, gin. Yeah. He's now. Hard, <laughs> I would love to see people from. People who really support Cologne coming on board and saying, "Do you know what? I want to be that poster boy and poster girl. I want to be the." Uh, do you know face, what? The face of it. No, yeah. I in fact, class, it's funny it? you said it. We kind of are, kind of are looking to that stage now. You know, I think if we. Well, you don't. I mean, you good things might happen this year. We might be able to afford another member of staff, and you know, we are looking for somebody. And when we take somebody into the family, that would be it. You know. Yeah, I was going to say, Brian, you do everything yourself. I mean, I've seen, I've seen you do this. I've seen you do this. You know, you've created the mash. You've done the mash. You've barreled it. You know, you bottled it, barreled it, yeah. labelled it, waxed it, penned it. You know, you've sold it. You know, you've gone out there and done that distribution network. You, you've driven all over over the, the country. You've done it all. There is not one part of the distillery you haven't done. Everything. Cleaning. Maintenance. I know. Everything. I do, I do, I do put a hand in everything. I really do. But you know, we've got Pierce Carr and Hugh Feenan on the floor with me, uh, and Pierce, you know, doing and they're doing records as well. I do still, we still have to unmuck in, and then Liam and Shane, you know, with a lot of brains behind it um, as well. Liam and Brogan and Shane McCarthy, they own Iron Craft Beverages. They also own Two Stacks, which are so you can see the level of creativity and, and just genius behind the guy. Behind the guy, so it's good. So even if the guys are busy and you know something happens and fall down, they're always there to pick you up and then we, we run on together again and bouncing ideas off each other and not just that, that level of you know expertise when it comes to finances that Liam and Shane have as their second nature. Um so it is a half that I can't accept responsibility or, or, or credit for everything. No, it's not at all. Thing, you know? what, what I'm saying is what I'm saying is I don't know another distillery. There probably is. And there's going to be, but someone to do all of that. Yeah. Usually, usually Jimmy owns the distillery and pays Michael to do the the mixing, and pays you know Sonia to do the the bottling, and pays you yeah. know Jessica and David to go out there and sell it. But that's not been happening. And what 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 is interesting is um, I actually think um, that two stacks malarkey stole your idea of cologne in a can. <laughs> cologne in a can became drum in a can. They stole well, it. Rings I think, I think you're just looking for the right. Clone in a can with a K. Maybe. <laughs> you, see, you see what I'm done there. Listen, we're going to wrap it up. I wanted to do 30, 45 minutes a session. Listen, I, I, could have, you know, I couldn't have got ready at 30 minutes, but I'm going to get ready at 45 minutes. I want to say thank you for you coming on, Brendan. Thank you. And listen, it's not, you're going to be back on later on in the year, and we're going to oh. see you, um, you know, during uh, Paddy's week for, for the clone box set. And we'll talk about that. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. But listen, genuinely, Brandon, have a lovely evening. Thanks for joining me. All right. And we'll get speaking Thank soon. You. Yes. No bother. Looking forward to getting the next 10 of these into the house. 10 of them. Listen, how, 
can I just say something? There's going to be um, the, the design. The design of those boxes is unreal. And again, we've actually streamlined it slightly, but it's still the same quality. You know, but uh, looking apart. So listen, yeah. Slancha, to the yeah. very end of our episode one of the series, Slancha. Thank you Come very on. much. Slancha. Right. Good night and good night to everyone else. Slancha. Yeah,